Gemara and Tainus tells us at the end of time there's going to be a tribunal of all the animals of the jungle and who's going to be put on trial? The snake. And what's the claim against the snake? The claim against the snake is we understand a lion when it attacks its prey it tramples it to death and it devours it Dove torif ochel. A bear kills its prey, tears it apart, and it takes it to its den. But you, snake, you bite your victim, you slither off. What is the value of you t- killing your prey if you have no personal benefit? So the snake will answer, My Yisrael Loshon. And the person who speaks Loshon Hora, what's his value? Why is he any better than I am? He also bites his victim and has no benefit from it. The Rishonim explain that when we speak about Saras, which we spoke about last week, this week we speak about how one is rehabilitated, how one recovers, what one has to do. When the lesion fades, so all the Rishon, all the commentators explain that the Tsaras, which is discussed by the Torah, is not a degenerative disease, but rather it's just a tag. This tag lesion appears based on its intensity of white will determine whether it's classified as a nego Tsaras, is it the leprosy, which Torah speaks of not? And if it is, one has to go out of the camp, it needs the pronounces of the Kohen, of Tome and Tor. So it's not degenerative. The Rishonim explain that when one speaks Loshon Hora, it doesn't emanate from one's physicality because there is no gain. There's no benefit from it. It's just a person has a degree of pleasure to speak negative about another person when it has no value call it gossip, whatever, you, but it has no constructive value. The snake, when it bites, it has no constructive value. The snake has no benefit. Now, a person, as we've been studying, is made up of a nefesh, a ruach, and a shama. The nefesh, we have part of the nefesh, it's classified and referred to as nefesh of Bahamis. We have an animal nefesh. All the animalistic drives that an animal has, a human being has. Except we're endowed with the neshama, the ability to make choices, we're able to rein in on that animal and even spiritualize it. So anytime a person sins, transgresses, where is that transgression emanating from? It's emanating from the animal aspect of the human being. Instead of reining in, we let the animal take over whether it's sexual, whether it's indulgence, whether it's stealing, amassing property, wealth, regardless whether it's yours or not yours, that all emanates from the Nefesh Bahamis. That's the physicality of the person, the animal which exists within the person. So whenever we sin, we have to search out the animal kingdom. Where do you find these characteristics? Lashon Hara, we don't find this. And that's what the animals said to the snake. Where do you find this? So he says, my Yusuf Baladoshan. And what about why why is the Baladoshan the one who speaks Loshan Hara? Why is he any better, any better than I am? Same thing. Now, whenever we sin, and this the Nefesh Chaim has explained that whenever there is a physical ailment, you have to trace it to its source. Somehow we failed in the physicality. So whenever we fail within our physicality, it manifests itself within our, within our physicality. But Loshan Hora doesn't emanate from, from our physicality. This is something which is unrelated to the animal, which exists within us. Therefore, as a result of that, how does it manifest itself? It's purely a tag, an intensity of white which identifies exactly what exactly, what is the source? What is the source? Loshan Hora. And as Rashi explains, first has to take eight Zerevs, 
He has to take Shni Tolas and an Azov. Erez is a tree of majesty, the cedar tree. He has to humble himself like the worm, like the hyssop grass, like the Azov. And only as a result of that humility will the person recognize his shortcomings.